Hello, hello, welcome to another edition of Pioneer with Ponsolet with me, Kevin Ponsolet. I hope everybody's doing well in these trying times and uh, staying safe, staying home as much as you can. Uh, really happy to have you here with me today. We've got Five Color Giants. Uh, this is a deck featuring Collected Company and 12 copies of Giant cards. Uh, we got four Bone Crusher Giant, four Uro, and four Kroxa. Um, this hand is reasonable because we can cast some interaction spells. Um, this is a card I'm trying out for the first time in this league. It works really well with our Rotting Regisaurs and our Giant Titans, um, giving them Trample. Also works with Ronus, giving Ronus itself Trample and Death Touch, which is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep this hand. We have a lot of good interaction and a reasonable curve here. No Coco, no like really exciting stuff, but um, we'll get to that later on, I'm sure. So we also have Hushbringer and Tekatli Honor Guard in the deck, which allow us to play those Titans, Kroxa and Uro, for their normal cost, but they stay in play. Um, they don't have their enter, battle, enter the battlefield triggers at all, which includes the one that sacrifices them when you don't escape them. So you, you end up with two mana Kroxa, 6-6, six, six, that when it attacks, your opponent discards a card and loses three life if they don't discard a, a land card. Um, and then Uro, three mana, 6-6, six, six, when it attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. And you don't get any, any downside as far as like sacrificing it on turn one. So we're probably just going to stomp that. I'm gonna, just going to get a red source here. We're playing one of each basic and four Fabled Passage to try and make the mana work. And you know what? It actually works kind of well for this five color deck in testing so far, but we'll see how it goes today. The, the land I'm most proud of, of in the list is uh, Unclaimed Territory, which you always name Giant. <laughs> it also works on the escape cost for Uro and Kroxa, which is fantastic. Um, we're going to play Roddy Reg here. Opponent seems to be doing something with a lot of colors as well. Maybe in Soul with all that glitters over there. And usually playing big giant creatures and then giving them Trample is pretty good. In general, um, we'll see how it goes here. Boros Charm Me. You got it. Change of Brute. That's, that resolves. We're at 15. Gonna discard a Mana Confluence, which we don't really want to play anyway because Taking damage from our lands is not where we want to be here. Um, actually, I'm going to play Bone Crusher Giant first. Because they don't have any blockers right now. So I want them not to know that our creatures are all going to have Trample next turn. Again, we're going to discard that other Mana Confluence. Put them to 11. And then we don't have the win, but we might. I mean... Depends on how they play this turn. We do have 11 damage on the board right now. So yeah, we're, we're kind of a five color aggro deck, <laughs> which is sort of an oxymoron, but it kind of works. It kind of works. And we do go over the top of all the other aggro decks. So we're like a slightly bigger aggro deck, I guess. They're just gonna scoop. They just they don't want to play anymore against our giant monsters. Also, the the gnome the the nomenclature we've used giant um, also applies to rotting register. It's just huge. It's just a giant creature. Um, and then Ronus is also a pretty giant creature for three mana. They aren't creature type giant, but you know I think they're honorary members. And Kenra Charioteer is just a just a good giant hype person, you know, hype warrior, hype jackal. Um, so we're playing against aggro, some sort of like red-white hyper-aggressive um, Boros Charm deck. 
So I kind of like the idea of scavenging ooze. Um, Hushbringer gaining us some life seems really good. I'm not sure about the three toughness being relevant for Takali, but probably they're playing Wild Slash. Um, in which case, I think we can probably trim a Hushbringer. And... Uh, we want all the big dudes. We want the abrupt decays. Ronus is a little less good. Giving our creatures trample, a little less necessary. When our creatures are just, just way bigger than theirs and they're not really looking to block very much. Um, and yeah, I guess we can cut one more Hushy. Doesn't look like they have a lot of enter the battlefield triggers for their creatures. But I could be wrong about that. We'll see. Um... So we kind of want to get a red source with this, but we'll keep. We have some interaction. Stomp and Abrupt Decay are both very good in this matchup, I assume. Sylvan Carrioted. In that case, I think we're going to get a green source with Fabled Passage. We want more forests in play anyway for the scavenging ooze later. And we can cast Stomp with the Mana Confluence if necessary. They are an All That Glitters deck. Alright, so we're probably just abrupt decaying next turn. That forest. I'll go ahead and pass. I don't think that. I mean, I guess they could be playing Shrapnel Blast. Yeah, they're probably playing Shrapnel Blast. Let's let's kill it now. Let's kill it now. So yeah, they're they're a three color and soul deck with all the glitters. It looks like. Ooh, that's a good draw. Um, they didn't do anything on their last turn. That's strange. I, pr I bet they have a bunch of removal in hand. So I think I'm just going to play Ronus and hope to hit some good stuff off this Coco on the following turn. I'm going to always name Giant with Unclaimed Territory. Just going to play Ronus here. Doesn't block, but they have no creatures. And next turn we can ambush block with Ronus and something else if we hit anything with a four power rating. All right, they do have a lot of reach with Boros Charm here too, so that's a little scary. Play land and pass the turn. Um, in that case, I kind of want to just play Bone Crusher Giant and attack with Ronus, but. This Coco is too juicy to pass up on. It uses all of our mana as well. Um, I probably should have done it pre-combat to see if we wanted to attack. But yeah, yeah, I regret that. I think we should have done it pre-combat just to get in for five. Um, interesting. Yeah, I guess we'll have Croaks that come into play and Scavenging use. Crooks is just going to make them discard um, since we don't have a Takali in play, but they're going to scoop. Um, yeah, they're just going to scoop. Okay. All right. Hello and welcome to round two with five color giants. Um, this hand is not going to do it since uh, we just can't cast any of our spells unless we draw some lands. So let's pitch that one. And uh, yeah, we'll keep this one. And I'm going to let go of one of these Unclaimed Territories. Unclaimed Territory pretty much always names Giant for this deck, which is a pretty big um, thing to recognize about it, if you're going to be playing it. Pretty much always named Giant. 
All right, so this is either either inverter or mono black aggro, potentially cell tie delirium or black green delirium slash black green rock, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's very likely inverter based on the basic swamp or mono black aggro. They took a card we actually can't cast, or at least we can't cast Stomp. But that makes me think that uh, it pushes me a little more towards the direction of them being mono black aggro because the Stomp is pretty good in that matchup. They have like Knight of the Ebon Legion here. No, it's Inverter. Okay. I'm gonna play the Karyatid. We don't need the honor guards in play right now. Um, sensor, okay. We do want honor guard in play by turn four. Well, actually by our turn three because they're on the play. So you know what? Maybe we were supposed to play honor guard there anyway. Um, but they censored our karyatid. So they would have censored honor guard, I suppose. Now it's a little risky if we just jam Regisaur. But on the other hand, if we jam Honor Guard, then they could just have Fatal Push Inverter anyway. So I think I'm just going to jam Regisaur, and we're just going to get Got if they have Inverter into Jace or Thassa's Oracle. Well, Thassa's Oracle we actually have Honor Guard for, but... So we're just going to play a big boy. It does attack into Inverter, which is nice. There aren't that many creatures in the format that just get in there. All right, Thassa's Oracle. That means we get it to Kotli Honor Guard and play before they um, get the Inverter and play, which is great. We're going to discard Honor Guard. We don't need two of them. Although drawing the land there makes me want to have had both. And just play both. Yeah, I suppose we could get we could have gotten rid of the swamp. That might have been wrong. But um let's see how this goes. They did have the fatal push for an honor guard. So obviously very punished for not keeping both. Um it was likely that we were only gonna be able to play one of them. They have the inverter. All right, so they have, oops. I normally take a picture of what's in their graveyard. Um, they had a Fatal Push, a Thoughtseize, a Thassa's Oracle, and I'm not sure what else, which is kind of a bummer. I, I usually take a picture to see what it is, but I had f 6 Either way, we're very likely dead here because we just drew a land. And we know they have an oracle in their five cards. And they have a Jace as well. Um, huh. We yeah, don't actually have any way to beat that here. Yeah, I could have played that a little better. Um, had we kept both honor guards, we had a decent shot here. Whoops. Um, it was a tough decision, though, like because the fourth land does mean Coco is live if we draw Coco there. And Coco would have been better than an honor guard, but yeah, it was just kind of a bummer that that's how it went down. Um, in hindsight, yeah, keeping both to Cotley's maybe means we win that game. But... We want some scoozes. We don't want to go too crazy with them, maybe. I mean, Revoker also is good against Jace. Um, yeah, if we revoke Jace and have a couple scoozes, we can keep them off dig through time. I don't know how crazy we want to go with that effect, but um, Ronus is hard to kill. 
Also attacks through Inverter, which is a big deal. Kenra Charioteer seems less useful in this matchup. Just like having Trample doesn't seem as big a deal. It does help us get through like a Thalia's or a Thassa's Oracle, but um, certainly doesn't seem super effective. Abrupt Decay certainly not very good. Um, I don't really want to drop both Ronis. Though drawing the first one is kind of important. I do want to keep all the Hushies and all the Takatlis, and I don't think I want to go too hard on sideboard interaction. Because I want to keep the main game plan going here. Although I guess we could trim Bone Crusher a bit. Since the the Stomp and the 4-3 are both not particularly useful. And play more scavenging use. Let's try that. Yeah, I think we can go to four scoos, but maybe just two revoker. This hand is pretty good. Yeah, I'll keep it. Got all our colors. We have a turn two Karyatid, and we don't have a Hushbringer or a Takatli, which are very good in this matchup, um, and obviously very good with the arrow that is in our hand. But if we just get out there with a Roddy Reg, we might be able to um, keep them off balance enough and draw some cards with arrow to get there. Um, it's just a fine hand. It's it's a little bit weak to Thoughtseize, but we've got all our colors. We're cooking with gas. Turn two Karyatid is really nice because we can just do everything. Uh, trying another land there was not ideal. I'm gonna put that on Giant. I'm going to opt in response. Damn. Another land is not great, but um, we can get out there ahead of the curve with Uro here. Just get more lands into play. I think that's what we're going to do. Even though getting the 7-6 in play would be nice, I just want to like put some of these lands out since we... Wow. Okay. This is certainly not ideal. Kept a 4-lander, drew 2 lands in a row. This is not good. We're going to need to draw like collected company next turn or something like that to feel like we have a shot here inverter is just a very consistent deck with a lot of interaction so if your draw is very anemic it becomes extremely difficult to beat them you need like a moderate to strong hand generally with any deck to get them all right well that's useful because now we can play uro and roddy right now I think we will do that Drew a Sylvan carry it did not ideal not ideal It's a pretty strong turn four. All told. But uh, probably not good enough. And Fabled Passage, putting a card in our yard here is pretty good too. Also Roddy Reg discarding this Temple Garden. Adding to our count in the graveyard. But we still need a couple more to flash back an arrow. To escape an arrow, that is. They have the inverter here. The game is probably just over. Now it's Jace. Okay, we can beat Jace. That's fine. In fact, we just get to attack Jace. All right, this is totally reasonable. 
Um, what do we need? Um, probably a blue source for those uh, crookses in the graveyard. I mean, arrows in the graveyard. And it's the temple garden. Charioteer. All right. That's a card. It's a three mana three three. It's not amazing, but it's a card. Gonna kill the Jays. It's just too risky not to. Too free here. And then I kind of want to just discard the Karyatid. Since having the Karyatid in play doesn't really help us at all. Yeah, we just want to discard it to Riding Regisaur to fill up our graveyard. Ooh. Ouch. Okay. That was good. That was a really good ritual of soot. Uh, but Uro's pretty strong here. Um, another thing we can do is, like, they can try and cast an inverter and we can collect a company response. Um... Kind of like the idea of just putting Uro in play. Not sure that it's better, but it's at least close. Now we have a Revoker, that's pretty strong. I think we're gonna play that. Name Jace. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. They got us pretty good with that ritual. Opponent with a full grip of seven. Digging through time right now. This is the reason the inverter deck is a bit egregious in my opinion. I, I do think Dig Through Time is a ridiculously powerful card. I don't necessarily think that they should have banned anything because I, I do like them letting the format kind of shake out a bit more. But this is definitely really high on the list for things to look at going forward. This card is pretty absurd how much power it is for two mana. Oof. So I'm worried that our collected company might get tagged by a counterspell here. If we play Uro and we draw land, then we can cast Collected Company, but we can't cast it through a sensor. And they likely left in sensor. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna pass the turn and at least make them tap out on their turn for counter magic. If they have it. Could have could still cast the Coco now to play around um, Mystical Dispute. But I kinda doubt they they brought in Mystical Dispute or left in Mystical Dispute. Since we only have Uro as our blue card. They're just playing control right now. I'll 
feel pretty good if this resolves, but I just don't expect it to. Supreme will. Ow, that hurts. Um, I've not seen that out of inverter. That was painful. This might get censored. We should attack first. No removal spell for our guy. All right, so we got a four, three, and a two, one, and we don't have a two, one anymore. Yeah, take through time's real powerful. It's very difficult to beat your inverter opponent once they resolve the first dig through time because it means they're probably going to find the second one and their graveyard is enormous right now so another two mana dig seven find the best two is going to be nail in the coffin for us like th there's not much you can do there's just not much you can do they targeted themselves with jays all right, we can't quite kill the Jace, but we can replay Uro. Might as well crack this passage. Getting a swamp, I guess. A mountain would have been better, but it's about the same. Uro. One, two, three, five. Five exiled cards, and we've got Nero. Let's draw a card. Gain some life. Put a land into play. Tag Jace down to one. It's a little bit sad that we can't kill the Jace, and we could have, like, Attack them to 10 here. Um, targeted themselves again. Castle of Antris. Five mana, six mana. That's different. Um, cool. <laughs> Jeez. Uh huh. That is a. Pioneer legal card. Okay. Well, darn. We'll get him next time. Hello and welcome to round three with five colored five colored giants. Um, yeah, we just got kind of trounced by Inverter last round. Um, Ritual of Soot into Dragon Lord Silimgar was pretty abusive that was rough um i think the the problem with inverter is that even if you think you have an okay matchup against it nobody actually has a good matchup against it it's unless you're like extremely aggressive and you go underneath it i don't i don't think you really have a good matchup against inverter and inverter players seem to think they even have a good matchup against like burn so it's it's tough it's a tough one but uh Anyway, this hand is playable, but on the play, just like casting a Kroxa on turn two and then potentially not doing anything on turn three is pretty bad, but we do have 24 lands in the deck. If you hit the third land before our turn three, we can cast Uro, um, most likely, but... And that will draw, draw a card and maybe get us into four for Collected Company. So I'm kind of contemplating this, but I'm going to mulligan because I think we have better sixes. And yeah, we're going to keep this one. And bottom the... 
Bone Crusher Giant, I think. Uh, Kenra. Yeah, definitely Kenra. And we're going to lead with Fabled Passage. Probably going to get a red source, but we'll see what they do. They played a forest and passed the turn. I think... I think we're going to get a red anyway. Sylvan, get out there. Castle Garen Brig, all right. Sylvan Karyatid. Uh huh. That was a great draw. So now we get to play Hushbringer. And this is the, the whole idea behind this five color giants deck, really. It's right here, it's right now. It's Hushbringer into two drop six six with text when it attacks and very relevant text when it attacks. Each opponent who didn't discard a non land card when they discard when it attacks loses three life. Um, it's like Lightning Bolt 6-6. Six, six. It's pretty crazy. Um, pretty absurd off of the uh, Hushbringer. Opponent playing Tireless Tracker, like mono green mid range here. Interesting. Very interesting. We definitely want to pop that Tireless Tracker before it gets out of control. And with that Fable Passage, we're able to pop it and play Roddy Reg. So everything's looking really good this game for us. Really good. Just going to do this now. Um, we're going to grab, since we have Crooks in play, it would be nice to get the Swamp, I think. Just gonna do this all pre-combat main phase because they have one green up. I don't think there's anything they're really planning on doing during our turn here. This might just be a scoop. This is a pretty absurd board state on turn four. Grapple with the past, so. They're mono green delirium. This is pretty interesting. I mean, Sylvan Karyatids in their deck, so they're probably not mono green. Maybe they just had a weird draw here. Yeah, they're green blue. Green blue arrows. Probably Cavalier. Thorns, sure. Makes sense. Gonna get in there with everybody because if they block the Hushbringer, they just die. So it's a free attack. They discarded another Cavalier of Thorns. Hushbringer stops Cavalier coming and going, which is great. Normally this would have put some things into play. The 6-6s six -sixes and 7-6s line up very well against their 5-6, clearly. And I don't think they have any board wipes. So I'm just going to play this Bone Crusher Giant. And pass. Um, yeah, I think the best thing they could probably do is play a couple creatures. I really doubt they have any way to wipe the board. And we got there, game one. So our opponent is playing Sylvan Karyatid. Um, Seder Wayfinder, probably Uro. Um, Cavalier of Thorns. So I think we want Scavenging Ooze for opposing Uro and 
Cavalier of Thorn to a lesser extent because Cavalier gets back a card onto their onto the top of their deck when it dies, unless we have Hushbringer in play, which we're hoping to. Hushbringer seems quite good in this matchup, although Hushbringer does make their Uro into just a giant giant guy, um, like the same way it does to ours. But we can just trade off with their Uro in general with like Ronus and um, we also have Abrupt Decay to kill Uro. Um, so this is interesting. I think on the draw, it might be okay to cut the Karyatids. Or maybe just like cut two and play two oozes. I haven't cut the Karyatids yet, but I think in this matchup, it doesn't seem awful. And we really want Ronas and Charioteer against their 1-1 chump blockers that they seem to be able to, uh, produce. So, yeah, we want all the Takali Hushbringer effects. We certainly don't want to board out any of our uh, giants. So, yeah, maybe we can trim like a Bone Crusher and a Karyatid for two Scoozes. Maybe two Bone Crushers, two Karyatids for four Scoozes. Nah. Can maybe do three K or uh, three oozes though and, and just play two karyatids. Let's try that. I'm a little worried about our colors because karyatid is certainly one of the ways that we get there. But I'm okay to not see a karyatid also. This hand is sweet. They are playing elves. Alright, so Getting rid of the bone crushers in any to any extent was probably wrong. It does make sense that they're playing elves, but there aren't that many decks that play both elves and Karyatid. They missed their second land drop. No, they didn't. Okay. Opponent's ramping real hard. I think I'm just going to Kroxa here. Having Scoos in play doesn't do a whole lot at the moment. Um, drawing all three of the Scoozes we boarded in, not really what we wanted to do, but um, Scoos is cool. Just drawing the third one was not ideal. If uh, if one of these was a Karyatid, I think we would have played Karyatid here to note. Yeah, actually carry it would have been great because in the next turn we can Coco. So punished a bit for taking out that second carry it Because certainly one of these three oozes was going to be that second carry it Cavalier. Nissa. Uh oh. Turn three Nissa. Um if we had had Karyatid, <laughs> we could have maybe fought fought back against, but without it, it's gonna be extremely difficult. Ronus. Alright, I'll just play Ronus. And we're going to take six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're probably just dead here. We need to top deck a land. And we need to hit really well with this Coco. Like it needs to be. Um, I don't even know. What are they doing with all this mana? World Breaker. Um, wow. Well. That's pretty good. Um, okay. All right. Fair enough. Their opponent, our opponent is extremely ramp oriented, and Bone Crusher is quite good. Shouldn't have taken out any of those. I think we can trim on Scavenging Ooze back down to 
maybe zero. Um, we didn't see any Euros. I I have to assume they're playing Euro, but um, ramping into Coco is really important, and yeah, also killing their Elves is really important. I think I'll just trim it down to one ooze. Oops. Oops, took out the wrong thing. Trim it down to one ooze and cut a Tikatli. Yeah. Because the flying is a little bit more relevant on Hushbringer. And the death trigger, yeah. Tikatli is slightly worse. We'll just play one ooze. They were pretty bad in that game. Um, gonna keep this, but we're gonna have to name plant with unclaimed at the moment, which is not ideal. But since we have two caryatids, we can get going pretty quickly. I'm gonna play the mountain first, just in case we draw a green source and don't have to name plant with unclaimed. Yeah, I was I was reluctant to pitch the uh carry tits for excuses and it really hurt us, so probably never do that again. Probably never pitching or uh sideboarding out the carry tits. They seem a little too important here. Alright, no land drop for next turn, but we can just like play another carry tid, worst case. Ooh, opponent ramping really hard again. This is scary. This is very scary. Um, hmm. So we can play Roddy Reg and then just play Kenra. The fact that we're choked on mana is very bad, but I think we just play the biggest thing we got and then give it Trample next turn, and they're not going to expect it to have Trample because nobody expects the Kenra Charioteer, I don't think. So maybe we can catch them unaware and, and take down a Planeswalker. And maybe that's their only payoff. They, they have six mana right now. So things are looking very bad for our three mana setup that we've got going on. But we can't do much about it if they have something busted here. Other than, yeah, hope that it's Nyssa and hope that we can attack into Nyssa with the Trample. That's the game plan. I wish they would have cast something with this, but it makes sense that they didn't. We're going to discard the other carry We just don't have time to cast it in this game, I don't think. Brub Decay. Destroy target non-land permanent. How unfortunate. Um... I think I want to play Ronus and then play Charioteer next turn. Because we're not killing the Nissa here anyway. Like they're just going to block with the Amaya Coast, most likely. And this would only deal 4 to Nissa, putting it to 2. And Nissa on 2, Nissa on 6. It's obviously better to have her on two, but I think it's more important for us to get this Ronus into play. Because Ronus with Death Touch and Trample means it only needs to deal one damage to the opposing blocker, and then the rest goes through to Nyssa or whatever, or their life total. Which is um, pretty important here. Obviously not drawing lands is rough, but 
I mean, turn three riding Regisaur, turn four Ronas. We could do worse without hitting our third land drop for sure. So they have access to seven mana here. If it's a world breaker, when we're in a world of trouble. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. Stone rain me when I've got uh, only two lands. <laughs> we really need to draw a land next turn. Hmm. But our our combat set is pretty good. Please give me a land. Please give me a land deck. Um, Abrupt Decay seems weak here. Damn. Um, Bold at Nissa, I guess. When this, I can bring it back to their hand. I guess that's okay. I mean, having two creatures that are good against Nissa is pretty nice. Like, good against a uh, world breaker in play. So things could have been a lot worse, but uh, we're going to play Hushbringer so we can play Kroxa next turn. If all goes poorly. Also, we can pump, pump the Hushbringer to maybe kill Nissa with just that. If we don't draw the land, oh well, I guess if, if we're able to pump, we're able to play Kenra, so. We're doing okay for having one land. We might be able to get there. It's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough, I assume. Opponent plays a 3 mana 6 6 because we played Hashi. And we discarded our Abrupt Decay. Opponent only has access to one blue right now. So if we're able to kill Nissa, Oh, they have more things to play. Gather the pack. They get a Corsair out of the deal. And cast Corsair, I, I suppose. Corsair's are very good here. I assume they take Corsair. I don't see a good reason to not take Corsair. Yeah. Play the Corsair. And have an island on top of their deck that they can play. That now they have access to more blue. They can flashback Uro. This is bad. Um, we have to discard Uro. Wow. Well, we kept a two-lander, and we did not get there. Wow. That's frustrating. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's a Kroxa. Here's a Hushbringer attacking this. Uh, turn six, kept a two-lander. What can you do? That's five draw steps, no lands. Not much you can do about it. Just kind of disheartening. That magic comes down to this kind of variance sometimes. But it's part of the game.
That's really rude. Play another world breaker. Killing my mountain. It's quite rude opponent. Hey, right on time, land number three, turn seven. Huh. Sadness, friend, sadness. Let's um scoop. <laughs> yeah, there's really nothing we can do, huh? Yeah, that's just really unfortunate. I guess we're going to the next match. I think we could have won this match had we drawn a land in the first, like, four draw steps. But we didn't find one until the sixth draw step, so... Bummer. Let's try the next one. All right, hello, and welcome to round four with five color giants. Um, a bit of unfortunate variance in the last round against mono green, or I guess green splash blue ramp. Um, but let's try and get him this round. Going to keep this Karyatid hand. Uh, most hands with Karyatid, and you can cast it on turn two, are keepable. That's one of the big reasons I should not have boarded out the Karyatids in the last round. Looks like blue-white control. Potentially, it's uh, spirits. But more likely blue-white control with Hallowed Fountain, Fountain tapped on turn one. Yep, definitely blue-white control. And against blue-white control... Do we want to... Yeah, we just want to play Carry a Ted here. It might get censored. That's okay. They probably think we're Nib. Nope, no censor. I think most opponents will think we're playing Nib, like five-color Nib, because that deck plays Sylvan Carry a Ted and a lot of different shocks. And then we are on a very different deck than that. But we do have Coco next turn. And that's got to be the best line here for us. Oh, they're Esper. All right, slightly different take. Teferi doesn't bounce carry it did, so that's cool. But we cannot cast Coco on their turn. Bouncing Omen of the Sea. All right, so they might have a Supreme Verdict, and that would be rough. What we can do here is just play, like, Hushbringer... And Kroxa, which is pretty awesome on turn three. And I think I'm just going to do that. Um, if they have the Supreme Verdict, you know, yeah, cool. We can Coco again, or Coco next turn, and try to rebuild. So, yeah, let's just name Giant with this. Play Hushy. Play the Giant. Little two mana six six action hanging out next to lips. So many lips. This is kind of the dream for this deck either a Coco into these two things or into these two things, or just playing them both on turn three with the Sylvan Karyatid is like kind of what you want to be doing. Double black. What's this? Don't have double white. Doom foretold. Okay. All right. That's fine. Let's sacrifice Sylvan Karyatid, I think. They're going to have to sacrifice their Teferi anyway, so we don't need to kill Teferi. And we can just play Uro or hold up Coco. So they're Esper Doom foretold, huh? Yeah, we can sack the Karyatid. Charioteer is pretty good. Um, I kind of want to just play Uro because it's so good here. We can sack the Hushbringer next turn. Can do this main phase because what are they going to do? They're tapped out. Tagging them with both. 
was a pretty good turn four, I would say, with uh, Kroxa and Uro in play. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. I guess they could have sacrificed their doom for told, huh? Yeah, they definitely could have. They might have fatal push for Croaks. Uh... Detention sphere. All right. And fatal push, maybe, maybe. They're at nine. Well, they might just be dead. I'm sure they have a non land card they can discard, though, since they missed their land drop. Oh, they discarded a land? Really? <laughs> Do they have a fatal push? Oh, okay. Discarded a land. But, oh, they must have misread Kirk, so that's probably what happened. They probably misread the Kroxa. Um So Revoker onto Fairy is probably fine. Um, Abrupt Decay seems good on Detention Sphere. Takatli and Hushbringer both seem pretty medium in this matchup. So we could probably just bring in a couple Revokers for those. And um, I wonder how good Ronus is. I wonder how good Kenra, Char Kenra Charioteer is as well. I don't think they probably have very many blockers, but they certainly can make tokens. So yeah, maybe the Charioteers can go. Um, and we can bring in maybe even more Revokers. Maybe three, and we'll play like five copies of uh, Hushbringer slash Dakali. Let's try that. This is a, uh, I don't know, pretty foreign deck to me, this um, Doom Foretold deck. So what did our opponent do? Oops. Opponent kept seven. OK. Um, I was considering keeping this if our opponent mulliganed because we get to just like make them discard and then draw and we have a fabled passage, two fabled passages, so we can fill up the graveyard pretty quick to recast these. I think I'm still going to keep it because we have unclaimed territories on giant and just plays on turns two and three and then some fabled passages to follow up to try to fill up our graveyard and get them going. So I think this makes sense. Um... Yeah, Ronus is cool too. Could Fabled Passage first and get like a red source. Yeah, let's do that. Get that mountain. Revoker. Hmm. I was very much just planning on playing Kroxa here. But Revoker onto Fairy right now does sound really good. I think I'm going to do that. Just name that to Fairy Time Raveler. And then we can Uro next turn to get some more lands in play and get the party started a little bit. No black source for our opponent. Let's get in there with Revoker. Yeah, another Unclaimed on Giant sounds good. Blue, green. Ooh, that's a lot of lands. 
So I think we get Black Source with the Fabled Passage. I think that's the move. Speaking of black sources, our, our opponent found one, and now they're probably playing Doom for Total. No, Oath of Jace. Okay. Oath of Jace is pretty sweet with Doom for Told. The deck seems kind of fun. I haven't messed around with it yet, but uh, Doom Foretold is a pretty cool card. Trial of Ambition and Cast Out were the discards. What did they keep? I'm scared. <laughs> Those cards are both really good. Gonna get a Black Source because uh, recasting Croak's uh, escape cost wise is uh, useful. Um, also casting Riding Regisaur and Croaks of this turn is pretty useful. Um, I think, I think we may want a Veronis and Croaks because I, I do feel like there's a, a mass removal spell in our future since they discarded these. Although getting some discards from the Roddy Reg does sound pretty good too. But I'm gonna play Ronis. Should have played Kroks at first. So they knew less about what we were gonna do this turn. That might affect what they're discarding. Yeah, that was bad sequencing on my part. Uh, something to keep in mind when you're playing Magic uh, is kind of like plan out your whole turn and then and then do it all in the order that you think is best don't just like decide that this is the these are the two things you're going to do and then just do them whatever order because you're just going to do both of them which is what i just did um yeah you want sequencing is important um you want to play your spells in the right order give your opponent less information We've drawn a lot of lands. Um, we still don't have a white source though, so we're gonna play one of these mana confluences. Oops. <laughs> Get in there with the Ronus, and we have lethal next turn, um, technically, but we're gonna have to sack something. Although we could pump the Regisaur twice after, or with the sack trigger on the stack and kill them. I doubt that that's gonna work, but who knows? Like I assume there's a Teferi Time Raveler in our, in our future here. And that, that Revoker was holding it back for a while. Now there's a Verdict, okay. Verdict does play here. I mean, Rona sticks around, but then we're going to sack it, so. Um, what's better? Probably Uro. Rather than Kroxa. Although Kroxa making them discard also seems pretty good. And Kroxa does deal more damage. Like, if they have all lands in hand, we just beat them next turn with Kroxa. It's close. I'm going to go with Arrow. Blue. Uh, I got to play this island first. 
Blue, green, blue, green. Exile everything except for the Kroxa. Draw a card, put a land into play. Sure. Play both our other spells. So that we have things to sack to doom foretold. And hopefully get there with this Uro. Drawing cards is great. Um, hopefully we can, uh, make it work here. Hopefully no more Supreme Verdicts in our future. Another Doom Foretold. I didn't know that you could play two. Wow. I didn't think about two Doom Foretolds being in play. I guess it's not a Legendary Permanent, though. All right. That's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. They are at five, though. Problem here is we are going to lose Uro and Sylvan Karyatid next turn. So that kind of sucks. Oh no, they have to sack both of these, huh? Oh, never mind. Yeah, we're in good shape. Never mind. They have to sack both their Doom for Tolds. I knew that. I knew that. Uh, Dream Trawler? What is this? Oh, Dance from the Mance or whatever. Dance with the Mance, Dance from the Mance. I think we are very dead if that's what they have. And I'm sure that this deck plays that. Yeah, I think that's game over. Looks like we're going to game three. Mm hmm. I'd like it if they stacked it the other way. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't. Well done, well done. No wonder they discarded those cards earlier. Forgot about Dance of the Mance. They're gonna get some tokens, draw some cards. We're just gonna scoop it up. That is, uh, well... We do have a Kirksa in our yard. <laughs> I guess if we had like a collected company next turn, we might be okay. I'm gonna pass. And I don't know, there's a shot here for us to come back, but we're extremely far behind. If our next draw step is not Coco or something else that is equally as powerful, Leyline of the Void, interesting, okay. So we're not gonna be able to flashback Kroxa. At this point, um, Otokaya just to get out of range. So yeah, we basically just need Cocos from now on. We need like infinite Cocos. We haven't drawn a Coco yet this game. All right, well, since that was all they did and it wasn't that powerful, I'm going to still wait and see if we can find Coco. Um, didn't have to play that third confluence. All of the th oh jeez, oh jeez, <laughs> opponents uh, having some fun. We are not. All right, that is that is something. That is definitely something. Um, so yeah, they don't really play creatures. Revoker is medium. We probably don't need to play three, and I think we do want all the Takatlis because we just want huge dudes in play immediately. Oops, we definitely don't want to cut a collected company. Scavenging Ooze is actually good. Might be better than Revoker, in fact. 
Um, yeah, I think we're just going to play Scavenging Use instead of Revoker. Because Dance of the Mance is a problem. And they also have Starfield of Nyx, which I think uses the Graveyard. Their deck is pretty cool, I gotta say. Pretty cool deck. I'm gonna keep this hand, even though we don't have a play till turn three. Fall of the Thran is a pretty sweet card. They have a Ley Line of the Void and a Keep of Seven cards. So this might be difficult. That Uro is not gonna be able to come back if we cast it on turn three. Neither will this Kroxa. I suppose I should have led with Mountain, considering Kroxa, and was punished there. I think I would have cast Kroxa there on turn two. Another one. Go for an Uro here. Just get a little gain three, draw, put a land into play. Yeah, Tagali's good here. Oath of the Jace, draw a bunch of cards. That's scary. Um, hmm. Five mana. The most mana efficient play is definitely Coco. Well, the most guaranteed like power is definitely Takatli plus Kroxa. I think I'm just gonna play Takali and Kroxa. And then Coco the, Coco our lives away the rest of the game. told so it's kind of good for them to discard enchantment so they can get back with dance from the manse dance of the manse I'm gonna get it wrong a lot I think they're going to 11, that's good for us. We're definitely holding up Coco, not close. I guess we could have played a 4-3 and made them discard again, but I'd much rather do this. They're gonna sack the Leyline of the Void? No, okay. <laughs> that was hopeful. I suppose we'll respond to that with the old Coca, Coca Company. Um, Ronus plus Bone Crusher Giant. We can just sack the Bone Crusher Giant. Doesn't really matter what the other card is. We want Ronus though. And yeah, the other card we're just gonna sack. So carry it, I guess. Oh, I guess we have to sack Ronus as well, but we can pump if we want to. Yeah, we're going to have to sack Ronus to the Doom Foretold. Ooh, not a land. If it was a land, we had the win with the Bone Crusher. I think this time I kind of do just want to cast um, Kuroksa and then 
play Bone Crusher Giant. We're just going to keep this one. Because that one wasn't escaped. And they have to discard again. It was a land. We got him. Hey. That was a fun win. Nice. That one felt pretty good. What's up, y'all? Welcome to round five. With five color giants. Um, we're gonna mulligan this hand. It's almost good enough on the draw. But we need one more land. Um, sure, we'll keep this one. And... I think I'm gonna actually bottom Fabled Passage. It's kind of strange, but we can cast all our cards even if we just have to cast Bone Crusher Giant. Um, yeah. Kind of strange because Fabled Passage can get our red source, which is kind of important for another two cards in our deck too, actually. Maybe, maybe we're supposed to keep the Fabled Passage. But we're on the draw. I, I assume we're going to Abrupt Decay something on turn two and then play Roddy Reg on turn three. So I wanted to prioritize being able to do those two, those three things, or those two things. Mausoleum Wanderer, okay. Selfless Spirit. Gonna have to abrupt decay that. Drew Temple Garden. No Hushbringer to Kotli here, which is very good in the matchup. Sure. Um, so we're going to have to just try and beat them down with Roddy Reg, which is hard because it doesn't have Trample, and that's one of the reasons we want... Um, Kenra Charioteer in our deck. Hmm. So we can gain three life, draw a card, put a Temple Garden into play, or just put a 7-6 into play, and then discard one of the arrows next turn. I think we're just going to do that. The fact that we don't have a red source... Other than unclaimed, which is, which can still cast Bone Crusher Giant, um, is a little bit sad, um, and we would have gotten there to cast Rotting Regisaur on turn three anyway, obviously. So yeah, maybe with more reps with the deck, we'll eventually just be keeping that Fabled Passage and bottoming unclaimed or something, or bottoming the swamp. I mean. Um, yeah, we're going to discard Nero. Drop Blooming Marsh again. No way to cast the, the shock portion of Bone Crusher Giant. No Naval Gast Herald, though, so we're putting them down to 11. They really want to spell Queller since they didn't have Naval Gast Herald, but, I mean, their hand might just be two Cocos or... Like rattle chains or something. They might not have it. And yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna play Bone Crusher. Because next turn, if we draw a Takatli, we can Takatli plus Uro. Yeah, I'm just casting Bone Crusher here. And they've got the Spell Queller. They couldn't wait to cast that thing. Could not wait. They tap so fast. A spell? Huh? Spell? <laughs> could almost see it. I could like see my opponent's face when they did that. What? Spell? Huh? 
Uh, so we take six down to six. We discard land. Naval gas. Oh, gross. All right. We got torched. Just utterly annihilated there. That was a fairly good draw from our opponent. I mean, they had one drop, two drop, two drop, spell queller, naval gas on their first five turns, which is, you know, not unbeatable, but we didn't find a red source after putting down that fabled passage for the bone crusher, so we weren't able to, like, keep them off balance. But even if we had, that draw was uh, pretty unbeatable for for our deck when we're on the draw that they just had. Um, so we're going to bring in Selfless Spirit just as a flying blocker for the most part. And we're going to board out probably a Roddy Reg, a Ronus or two. Yeah, Ronus. The fact that it gives Trample is really nice. Maybe one of those and one of the Kenras. It, it is kind of a matchup where we really need Trample. So it's kind of funny that we're like boarding out. Maybe we keep both Kenras and we board out one of the Ronuses. They're both the Ronuses. Maybe that's the move. Because Ronus, like the extra mana we have to put, pump into it is pretty bad for us. And it's not like Ronus is ever blocking, so the death touch is pretty useless. Um, yeah, that's a great hand. Let's keep it. Opponent snap kept their seven as well. Carry it did. Yeah, we can play carry it did first. So we can play two things next turn. Hushy's going to be one of them for sure. Hushbringer and Takali are both very good in this matchup, as I'm sure you can imagine, because of the Spirits deck being mostly uh, creatures with comes into play abilities. I'm going to hold this Abrupt Decay till a little bit later. Um, they can't Spell Queller the Abrupt Decay because of Hushbringer, so we don't have to worry about that. They're just going to pass the turn. All right. I think I'm going to stomp the Chains. And see how they play this. Their lords having flash is kind of annoying. I mean, this will still kill their chains, but they get the lord into play. And then we're just, we're just going to abrupt decay the lord. We just need to keep them off the board. And get some damage in when we can afford to. <laughs> Looks like they might just be blue-white. Oh no, there's the green. Charioteer. <laughs> Charioteer is not awesome here, but uh, now that we don't have any kind of removal, we're just gonna play the um, Bone Crusher. Our life total does matter quite a bit here. Yeah, you can cast Spell Queller in response, it's not gonna do anything. It's a good try though. They got real excited again. They got so excited. Hmm. 
rattle chains. All right, I mean, we're still not in a great spot. Even though we had a really good start, we just haven't found any power cards to finish the game. And we only have one thing that can attack. Just gonna seal away. Ouch. All right, so this Kenra Chariot here, definitely not looking great. Not excited about it right now. Uh, the card's obviously very good if we have our seven sixes in play or six sixes in play, but three mana three three just doesn't hold its weight. Um, but that's why it's in the deck is because it's so good with our six sixes and seven sixes. Oh no. Oh no. We really need to turn the corner at some point here. It's actually like probably comes down to who draws more cocos at this point. And we are certainly not drawing the right cards. Coco's and Spectral Sailor is very good for them because they can draw a lot of cards with it. So we need to fade that. My goodness. All right. Sometimes it's like this. <laughs> uh, mountain. <laughs> oh geez. Opponent seems to be trying a lot of land as well. There's a big boy. With trample. And I kind of do want to discard this forest, like we never need that forest. So don't really care about it. And it being in the graveyard is actually kind of nice for Kirksa and Uro later, if we ever draw those cards. But now we have something that can attack, so that's great. Eventually the charioteer paid off. Selfless Spirit is nice. They probably have more Seal Away or something. And they're just going to Coco before my attack. Interesting. Oof. No more Lord, no more Lord. Just one Lord is fine. It's not fine. It's very bad for us. Like I was saying, whoever draws more Cocos is probably going to get there. We only have two flying blockers, and now they have a lot of good attacks. And we have only one good attack. And if they double block with Wanderer and Queller, we can only kill Queller. So they tr they get to trade one Queller for our Riding Regisaur, which feels really bad. Also Selfless Spirit. Yeah, jeez. Jeez. I guess we can sack our own selfless spirit to keep Rowdy Reg around because we really need it. But oh no, another seal away. Oh, okay. Lock block, sack selfless. Yeah, they're just going to sack selfless. So yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. I'd like to kill a lord and your herald, I guess. No, I guess selfless and the herald. I mean selfless and the lord, but they're just going to sack it. No? They're not going to sack it? Oh, they are. They're at 15. I 
I think I just sack mine too. Because we got another one. 16 damage marked on the Regisaur. But we're in very bad shape here because they did draw Coco and we've bricked most of the time. Oh no. <sighs> That's frustrating. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I don't actually think we have outs anymore if they just make attacks. So that's sad. Like, I'm not even sure why they left back so many things. They're all good attacks. They're at 15. Like, what are we going to do? All right. I guess that charioteer giving trample really scared him. But now with the three lords, it's just like, what do we do? Uh, all right. So we're at 16. We'll just feign power by passing the turn. Feign like we have some. Wow. Yeah, our, once we went into the top deck mode, our opponent has drawn um, pretty primo, and we have drawn pretty awful. Oh my goodness. You can have it. Just stop it, opponent. Just stop it. All right. So that was a bummer way to lose uh, and not do very well in our league. Let's have a deck tech here. Um, hello and welcome to the deck tech for five color giants. Uh, we got Takatli and Hushbringer, three of each. Turning off the Sacrifice Enter the Battlefield ability of Kroxa and Uro, which is going to allow us to have a 2-mana 6-6 six, six and a 3-mana 6-6, six, six, respectively. Um, that also stops their Enter the Battlefield trigger, but when they attack, they still get the trigger of draw a card, gain 3 life, put a land in the battlefield, and opponent discards and loses 3 life if it's not a land card. Or if it's not a not... not if they didn't discard a land card, it's kind of worded strangely. Um, but it just makes it work. So if they have no cards in hand, they still take three life. Um, which is kind of the bread and butter. And then you can Coco into both of those pieces. So like Collected Company hits to Kali Honor Guard and Uro. You get your free 6-6. Six, six, and when it attacks, you draw a card. This card's pretty absurd. Everybody knows that. So is this card. When it attacks, um, and like if it stays in play, it's pretty absurd. If they don't kill it... Um, Sylvan Karyatid to make the mana better, four mana confluence to make the mana better, four unclaimed territory that you're going to name giant with, because Uro's a giant, Kirk's is a giant, Bone Crusher giant is a giant, um, Riding Regisaur is also giant, but it's not a giant, so we have some black sources in there so we can cast it, but uh, Riding Regisaur is just kind of another titan type, type um, creature. They can really get the job done. Uh, great hit off of Collected Company. Just hitting a 7-6 is pretty absurd. And we're already playing black, so it was kind of free. And so we're kind of like a five-color aggro deck. Five-color aggro Coco uh, with some some grindy draws, too. Ronus is going to give Trample, and so is Kenra Charioteer, because that's the problem with these cards. No Trample on any of them. So we want to give our 12 power creatures Trample, and when you give Ronus Trample, Death Touch and Trample means you can put one damage on your on the blocking creature and then trample over for four uh, with Ronus, which is pretty sweet. Death Touch and Trample, pretty awesome interaction. And then Ronus obviously giving other creatures plus two plus zero and Trample puts the game away pretty fast. A couple interaction spells and, to go with our four Stomp interaction spells and a bunch of Cocos with, with 30 creatures. Um, that's the idea. Um, and then in the, in the sideboard here, we've got scavenging ooze for decks that are generally creature decks. We're going to probably bring in some amount of scavenging ooze, not spirits though, because it doesn't block flyers and generally their creatures aren't dying as much. Um, but 
against uh, a lot of creature decks, you're going to bring in scavenging. There's a lot of decks that are abusing the graveyard in any way. You're going to bring in at least a couple, but maybe all the way up to four if it's like a very graveyard-centric deck. Uh, for Exeter Revoker, for Planeswalkers, for artifacts that have activated abilities that are difficult, like maybe uh, Etherworks Marvel or something, but generally going to be for Planeswalkers. You're going to bring it in against mono green Planeswalkers like Karn, Nyssa, Vivian. Um, you can even name Elvish Mystic with this, Voyaging Seder. You can name Sylvan Caryatid if we don't have our own out, and they do. Um, you can name a lot of things, but a lot of the time it's just going to name um, Planeswalkers, like Teferi Time Raveler, that kind of thing. Speaking of Teferi Time Raveler, decks with Supreme Verdict, we're going to bring in Selfless Spirit. Also bring in Selfless Spirit against Spirits, just because it's a flyer and it can block them while we get, get the job done on the ground. Um, then a couple Damping Spheres and a couple Idolin of Rhetorics for, like... Uh, the combo decks like Jeskai Ascendancy um, and Lotus Breach, we're going to want those cards. So uh, just to talk a little bit more about our league, I do think we were on the bad end of variants. Um, certainly could have played it a little bit tighter, but I think a lot of those draws were just pretty bad. I do think this deck is pretty powerful. Um, usually, It usually can present like a pretty unbeatable board state by turn five and um, also interact with the opponent in the form of Kroxa, Brev Decay, and Stomp. So it's not like we're just like an all-in aggro deck. We're actually interacting in the fact that we have Takatli and Hushbringer that shut off a lot of our opponent's creatures. Most people are playing creatures with the Enter the Battlefield triggers and these shut them off. So that's kind of cool against things like Inverter, Thassa's Oracle, um... Cavalier of Thorns, um, Voracious Hydra. A lot of a lot of creatures in the format right now are doing something when they enter the battlefield, and these cards shut them off. So they have a lot of splash damage against our opponent's decks, and then also make our creatures pretty pretty unbeatable by just being two mana six sixes and three mana six sixes. But yeah, it didn't play out so well. We went two and three. Um, I think it's a pretty fun deck though, and it's worth tooling around some more. Kenra Charioteer was kind of a last second inclusion to try and get these seven sixes to be trampling um, and six sixes. Uh, not fully sure about this one yet, but Abrupt Decay did play pretty well, and that's another card I just added recently. But thanks so much for hanging out. Hope to catch you on my stream. Um, I'm going to be streaming a lot because we're all in self-quarantine mode right now. Also, my my city just announced that they're going on full lockdown. Um not going to be able to, or we're, we're not supposed to leave our houses to do anything but like go get uh, basic needs like food and stuff. So yeah, uh, be streaming a lot. So come check me out. And I hope you and your family and your friends are staying safe and not getting sick. And if you are sick, I hope a uh, quick recovery for you and all your loved ones. Thanks so much for hanging out again. Can't wait to see you on the stream and next week for another article with some sweet pioneer brews. Catch you later.